Media days rolling on from McCormick Place. A lot of fun for the Indiana Hoosiers. How about that? Not a good day, but a great day. Yeah. For Indiana yes, uh, T. Gary Scale. Right no, there. that ain't me. That's us. <laughs> <laughs> What you, what was that number one there, Richard? I was trying to figure out. Uh, you see that or hook them horns? I I'm not sure. They, they kind of caught uh, me mid. You know, I was, what, I was just trying to put my arm around them, I think, and they got me in a weird, uh, in a weird I, pose. I All right. uh, Richard Lego, Rashard Fan, T. Gray Scales, welcome, guys. Good to have you with us. Nice to be here. Good to be here. Good to be here. Uh, big change for you guys from where you were a year ago. You have a new head coach in Tom Allen. It was interesting to talk to him about his journey and what a bizarre last year this has been for him. I know you guys haven't been through a season yet with him as the head coach. You've certainly been through a season with him as your coordinator, and you, you guys can, can certainly speak to that. But, T. Gray, I'll start with you. What's it like to have him in charge, Coach Allen? Um, uh, It's exciting. You know, um. We're, uh, we're, we're in a position where he's going to put us in the best position. Um, and I think personally, he, he, he wants the best interest out of all of us. And just knowing him, he's going to push us to the limit and um, hope for the best for us. Rashad? Uh, I mean, it's definitely been nice. You know, Coach Allen is one of the great, best guys I know. I mean, he definitely loves us. He preaches LEL. He preaches it's not about us, but he's about those things. I mean, we walked in his house, um, <laughs> me and Tigre walked in his house for the NFL draft, and we look, and his Wi-Fi password is uh, something everybody could guess because it's a breakthrough. So we're like, all of Indiana probably has his password. And then he has Elio up in his um, downstairs basement. So it's nice to see. I mean, he loves us. He's there for us and anytime we need him, and, you know, we'll go to bat for him. And right now he's furiously changing his Wi-Fi <laughs> password. Right? I mean, everybody's probably already on it anyway. <laughs> uh, what about from your point of view, Richard, to have this this change at the top? Yeah, it's it was very different for me. Um, just you know, they they were dealing with him all last season. Um, so for me, right off the bat, uh, you see how much he cares, um, and you, I could see that last year with these guys. But um, when I got a, a close relationship with him, uh, and you see how much he really cares. Uh, about us as players and about the state of Indiana and, and our program. Uh, it, it's, it's contagious and um, it's spread throughout the team. Um, I think everybody, if you ask anybody on the team, they, they'll, they'll say they, uh, they truly believe, you know, LEO is... is uh, and let everyone know, just in case they don't, LEO is LEO, love yeah, each other, It stands right? for love each other. Okay. And uh, it's not just a catchphrase, you know, you can put on Twitter or anything like that. It's something that we take extremely mm -hmm. serious and... Um, you don't really know until, until you're around Coach Allen and uh, can feel that energy from him. Uh, let me get, ask you guys this. One of the things that I thought was really interesting about Coach Allen as I was kind of you know reading a bit about what he's done as he's taken over the program is he's got his phrases and he talked a lot about you know the numbers that he challenged you guys with, the LEO, all of the different things. But I know that he also asked each one of you individually to pick a word right that would define you and that you would carry forward through your season. So I'm interested in getting the word from each one of you, what you chose, and then why. So, T. Gray, we can start with you. Uh, my one word for the season was solid, and it's very simple. It was just simple. It was something that me and my brother went by growing up, being solid, um, basically saying nothing can break us. You know, um, any situation, no situation, or circumstance can break us, and, and that's what it really means. How about for you, Rashad? What's your word? Uh, my one word is cherish. Um, I think a lot of times for me, I speed through life. You know, I'm always like, man, I can't wait to this game. I can't wait to this event. So now it's just sit back, relax, enjoy it. Take your time. I mean, you know, don't rush it. You know, you only get these days, these moments once. So, you know, just embrace all of it. Embrace this time my teammates, but also cherish being an underdog. Let me ask you this, because for you, right, you had a decision to make. You could have rushed through both of you guys. I mean, you guys made a decision to come back. You both could have been in the NFL draft. Did Cherish play a role? I mean, are, are you thinking about, hey, I, I want to experience another year of this, or was it just this is a practical decision, this is the right thing for me to do? Uh, I mean, it, I definitely, you know, Tigre coming back had a big impact. We talked so much um, to each other about it. And so, yeah, I definitely um, wanted to come back. That was one reason having Tigre back, being with a team, seeing how many starters are back. But, you know, once I decided I was coming back, then chairs really kicked in because if I'm going to be here, you know, enjoy every day. Don't take any day for granted and keep getting better. Richard, what's your word? Uh, my word for the season is confidence. And uh, that's my one word because, Confidence come from uh, the quarterback position, and it it uh, 
goes throughout the entire team. And uh, we needed more confidence from the quarterback position last year. Uh, myself, I need to be more confident. Uh, so everyone believed in me. And uh, that that's the area I needed to make the most improvement on so that I, my offense knows no matter what the situation is, no matter what the down and distance is, if we got the ball and there's some time left on the clock, we're going to have a chance. How does that translate to what I know was the bugaboo that you're kind of trying to shed with the interceptions from last year? How does, how does confidence play into cutting down on interceptions? Yeah, I mean, having the confidence in my guys, you know, I don't have to force a ball. Um, I can check it down to my running back, uh, and he can get 10 yards from it, whatever it is. You know, not you don't always have to make the big play. Um, you never know where a check down is going to end up, right? You check it down to a buddy for three yards, he'll end up 30 yards downfield. Um, most first downs in football are made before the sticks. And I think that's something I didn't fully understand last year. First downs don't come past the sticks most of the time. They come from guys catching the ball and, and making somebody miss and making a play. So just having confidence in all my teammates and in myself uh, that if I worry about me and my job, that they all do their job also. It's funny because things did kind of, I don't want to say they reversed, because certainly the, the offense had its moments last year, and I don't mean this in any way as a negative commentary on the offense, but the defense was what seemed to carry Indiana last year. And as you guys are acutely aware, that has not been the case in past years. The identity of this program under Coach Allen, do you think it can be more defensive, where it's not just every game is going to be a shootout, but hey, we can be a really solid defensive team? Yeah, I think we want to be a, a well-rounded team um, in, in three phases, you know, um, offense, defense, and special team. And I think once we get the offense rolling again, defense stays solid, and um, how the special team is where it's supposed to be, I think this team will be uh, where we want it to be in the future. What do you think? Is this going to be a program known for defense going forward? I mean, definitely, you know, you want to have a strong defense, but you also want to look at it as, you know, the great teams, their defense and offense is both their strengths. You know, we want to be getting it going at the same time, you know, during the game. Anytime our offense can bust a big play, score a touchdown, and then the team has to worry about, man, we got to go against that defense, how we go score. So you kind of just, you know, we have each other's back. We're right there for each other. And if the defense is struggling, we know our offense has us and vice versa. You know, when they're struggling, we got them and we go stay in the game and uh, extend the leads. Well, there's some change offensively obviously with Kevin Wilson departing Mike DeBoard's the new offensive coordinator what's this going to look like schematically because if you look back at his history he's done a lot of different things as you know he's been around quite a while and has made a huge impact in the coaching profession what do what Mike DeBoard offense are we going to see with Indiana uh, you're going to see an explosive offense that likes to go fast um, likes to take care of the football you know our offensive philosophy is PET, that stands for protect the football, have explosive plays and tempo. You know, we want to be, you can ask these guys, we go fast. Um, it's going to be a lot for defenses. Uh, and when we get it down to our, our confidence level, it's through the roof and we can go that fast, uh, it's going to be fun. But like I said, it all comes down to protecting the ball. Um, that's the number one thing for us. And if we can do that, uh, accompanied by these guys on the defense side of the ball, uh, we're excited. But it sounds like what you're saying is there's not going to be a dramatic change. I mean, this is still going to be a hurry up, spread, throw the ball around kind of offense, right? We're not we're not all of a sudden going to be grinding it out here. No, yeah, I think uh, if you're watching the game on TV, it'll look it'll look decently similar um, to us. They had to learn it and go through the change. Um, it's a difference. Okay. Different different uh, language. You know, it's a whole different language. But when it comes down to it, you know, we're still going to go fast. We're going to run the ball. We're going to throw the ball. We're going to take shots. What was the biggest change defensively last year? How did you guys go from where you were two years ago to making the huge jump and becoming a really solid representative Big Ten defense? T. Gray, you want to start? Uh, I would just say the buy-in from our players. Um, you, you had a team that wanted to be great. Um, you had players that came in earlier um, and, and stayed later. And... Um, the film in the film room you had people that was um contributing that way by uh, participating and, and it was just all those small things that that showed that this team wanted to win and, and we went out there and, and it showed on the field 
Uh, for me, I think it was mindset. I mean, going out there, worrying about your one-on-one -on -one battles. You know, I preach the secondary. You know, don't worry about what the D-line is doing, what the linebackers are doing. Trust they're going to get their job done, but worry about the man in front of you. Especially for us, it's no secret we play a lot of man-to-man. -man. So, you know, for me, I focus on winning my one-on-one -on -one battle with that receiver across from me. And I know if everybody else does that, then where they got to throw the ball, where they got to run the ball. So it's just, you know, not blaming anybody, you know, staying one as a team, staying tight as a team, and just going out there and trusting each other and making those plays. Rashard mentioned winning one-on-one -on -one battles, T. Gray. I saw a list of the most unblockable players in college football, and you were on that list. Mm -hmm. Did you see that list? Yeah, I seen it. How did it make you feel to be a part of that? Um, it was just what fans said, you know, um, that's what we do. We want to win our one-on-one -on -one battles. Um, whatever you got to do to help the team, and, and that's what we are striving off of. He's being, he's being modest. I mean, you know, this guy, I, I see him work in practice, you know. I'm probably the only person he can't get off a block from, you know. I like to keep him hemmed up, but I mean. Well, don't leave, you me, look off, at, don't leave he, me off the list. Now. You look at T-Gray, and I mean, to me, I tell everybody he's the best linebacker in the country. Like, the way he works, the, the way he plays in these games. So, I mean, it's not a surprise he was on the list, but I just can't wait to see this season, what he does, and then the future he has past this. We led the nation in tackles for loss. That's a good thing to lead the nation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, he's letting his action speak for him. So he doesn't need any words, right? Uh, no words. All right. T, T. Gray Scales, Richard Fat, <laughs> Richard Lego. Thanks a lot, guys. Really appreciate Thank it. Thank you for having us. Hey, Mom. Thanks for the rest of your time in Chicago.